Hey everyone, welcome back, it's Adam. In this episode, we'll be talking about Azure governance with use of Azure policies. Stay tuned. This time, we talk about Azure policy, one of the key elements of Azure governance. Our objective is to talk about what Azure policy is and what are the typical scenarios in which you would want to use Azure policy in your own Azure environment. As we were progressing throughout all of our episodes, we've learned that we are customers of Azure. And as a customers, we go to Azure portal to create Azure services. We do that by specifying the common properties for each service. We specify the type of the service that we want, let's say an app service which can host our web applications, a location, which is also called Azure region. In this case, Germany and other common properties for specific services, let's say SKU. When we choose all of those properties, we send a request to Azure. We do that through either Azure portal, or we can do it through Azure PowerShell, CLI, or any other tool of our choosing. What Azure does first is validating this request. So Azure will check whether the service is a proper service, did we fill all the required properties, is the combination of the properties correct, is the service available in this region and many other things. And once the request is validated, the next thing that is being checked are permissions. So Azure will check whether the user that submitted the request to create this specific Azure resource has all the permissions required to create the service. And if it does, it creates the service with the properties that we specified. But there's one more thing that Azure does before creating that service, which is checking for policies. So what is policy? Azure policy allows you to check for Azure resource properties and then make decisions based on the values of those properties. So for example, let's say we have a company and our company has some data sovereignty requirements that needs to be met in order to create applications. Let's say because of the security policy, our data might never be processed outside of the German borders. To do that, we need to ensure that all of our services that will be created in Azure will be in location Germany. To do that, we can create Azure policy. So we create a policy in which we'll check for certain Azure properties, in this case, location. And then we can create a rule and check whether location is Germany, then we can allow for the deployment. But if the value is anything else, then deny that deployment. And this is called policy definition. In your Azure environment, you can create as many policy definitions as you want in order to match your internal standards. And once this policy definition is created and then assigned to an Azure scope, let's say Azure subscription, it will be active and will validate all of the deployments that will happen within this specific scope. In our example, this means all the properties from our request will go to policy definition. In this case, the location is Germany. Therefore, we will allow for this deployment. As such, Azure will create our resource. If on the other hand, our location would be, for instance, West Europe, that means in this case, our policy definition would get a different location to validate. We would go into deny route. Therefore, this validation would fail and the service would not be created. What's important here to notice is that policies do not check for user permissions. They already assume that user has a right to create Azure resources because this was checked in a previous step. In case of Azure policy, we check for resource properties. So we focus on the definition of our resources so we can make sure that our resources are compliant with our internal standards. When it comes to policy definition, the decision that you make, so either allow, deny or any other is called policy effect. And there are more than just two. So we'll talk about this a little bit later. So let me show you this in action. Let's actually follow this example, except in Azure portal. Inside of the Azure portal, I already have set up a resource group for our demo. So what I will do, I will use search and type policy. I will navigate to the service called Azure policy. This panel gives me a high level overview of all of the policies that are currently assigned across all of my Azure subscriptions and how many resources within my Azure subscriptions are compliant or not compliant with my policies. What interests us are on the left hand side, definitions, which is the list of currently available policies in your Azure subscriptions. Microsoft prepared hundreds of 
policies available to you just for you to use. So those are built-in policies. One thing to note is that there are two types of policies. There's a policy. Policy is a singular check and then singular effect that you want to apply. Just like in our example. If you want to group multiple policies, those are called initiatives. So initiative allow you to bundle multiple policies and then assign them as a single combined bundle. So if you want to make sure that all the subscriptions will follow the same rules, you can use policy initiatives. There are plenty of available initiative bundles already, like UK Official and UK NHS with 59 policies bundled together. So you can very easily use this initiative and apply this to your environment if you want to follow those standards. One important note here is that those are of course the built-in policies. If you want, you can create your own to match your company standards. So let's switch back to policies. Because in this demo, I want to follow the example from our presentation, where I will make sure that no resources can be created outside of my specified Azure region. To do that, I can search for policy and type location. And there is a policy called allowed locations. I can select it and review its details. If you want to use that policy, then you can select assign. This will allow you to choose the scope. So in which Azure subscription, each, which Azure management group, maybe a resource group, this policy will be active, will be checked. So in this case, I will select my subscription. I will choose my resource group. In this case, it's AZ900 policy and hit select. Exclusions is a pretty neat feature, which allows me to choose a scope, like a broader scope, let's say entire subscriptions, and then choose scopes for which this policy should not be checked. Let's say, choose a few resource groups where I want to omit this policy check. And later, we just give this assignment a name, a name that will indicate what this specific policy assignment does. In this case, let's call this Allowed Locations Germany. Then we go and make sure that the policy enforcement is enabled, and we hit Next. On this screen, we choose what are the parameters, which is something we can create while defining the policy ourselves. To follow our example, we search for German, so all the regions within Azure that are located within Germany. We found two, Germany North and Germany West Central. So make sure to allow either of those locations. Then I select Next. And the remediation tab is very interesting because by default, Azure policies are only applied to the newly created resources or the ones that are being currently modified. If you have already existing resources, you can create something called remediation task, which will audit and apply your policies against those resources that already exist in your Azure environment. But for now, we don't have to worry about this. So let's move on. We then can hit next and just review our assignment. Once we are happy with it, we can just hit create and that's it. So once the policy has been assigned, we can already test it. That means we will now go to our resource group, navigate to our AZ900 policy resource group. And in this resource group, we will create a service. Let's say the quickest one that requires the least amount of information are logic apps. So hit add and type logic app. In the marketplace, I will select the template for the logic app service, hit create. And in my AZ900 policy resource group, I will create a logic app called amdemo1. And in this example, my region is already selected to Germany West Central. As such, I will simply hit create to create this service. This deployment will of course go through because our policy is currently allowing for this deployment to happen. If we want, we can confirm that the location was Germany West Central in our deployment details. But let's say we do that demo again, but this time I will choose a different region. So I will go to my resource group, again to AZ900 policy, select add, type logic up, select the template again, hit create, and this time AM demo 2, and I will choose Norway East, and hit create. 
notice that validation will go through, right? So the request itself is okay because those properties, the combination of properties is okay. But our deployment, after it will start, in a few seconds, it will fail. And here it is. The deployment failed. And if we click on deployment details, we'll see information that this was disallowed by policy. And if we go into raw errors on or deep dive here into specific information, we will see even the name of the policy that this allowed this. So allowed locations Germany, this allowed this specific deployment because it didn't match the rule. And we can deep dive into specifics of this particular deployment to see what field was checked in this case, we can see that location was checked and it didn't match either target value of Germany North or Germany West Central. Therefore, it was denied. This is, of course, a little bit more than you need to know for Azure Fundamentals. What you just need to know is how it works, that you check certain properties and you decide what to do based on the values of those properties. So in summary, Azure policy is designed to help customers with the resource governance, resource security, compliance, and even cost management, because you can create Azure policy, which will only allow standard tiers for, let's say, your Azure SQL database and block premium tiers from being created. One important distinction that should be made here. In the previous episodes, we've learned about role-based access control, which is a permission-based feature that focuses on user actions. If you remember, we were assigning roles to users and preventing them from doing something. In this case, we just focus on the resource properties themselves, making sure that whoever creates the resource, those resources will be compliant. There are a few keywords that you should remember here. The first one is called policy definition. This describes which properties should be checked and what should happen. And it does that by specifying the condition of those properties. It's a simple if else statement. And then based on those statements, you apply an effect. And there are multiple effects that you can apply. For example, in our demo, we use deny effect. Deny stops the deployment from happening. But besides this effect, you can also apply audit effect, which will allow for the deployment to happen, but it will raise a warning in this overview panel that we've seen in Azure. So we'll see that this resource is not compliant, but we will still allow for the deployment to happen. Append and modify are very interesting because they allow customers, they allow Azure administrators to modify the deployment before they happen. There are many examples of cool policy definitions already available in Azure, like the one we used called allowed locations, or maybe instead allowed resource types that allows you to Specify which services can be created in your Azure environment. You can choose which kind of SKUs are allowed or something that we've talked about in the last episode when we discussed how resource tags help us with Azure governance. So there's a policy which allows you to inherit resource tags from a resource group or Azure subscriptions. In Azure, there's plenty of built-in policies available to you so you can start using them right away. But if you have more custom requirements, you can always build your own custom policies. And if you have multiple policies that you want to apply at the same time, you might want to group them into something called policy initiative. Also, we have policy assignment. So you can assign either policy definition or entire initiative to a scope. And as we learned in a previous episode, scope can be anything from the management group, entire subscriptions, resource groups, or specific resources. And as I briefly mentioned, policies allows for exclusions of scopes. And that's it when it comes to policy. All the materials for this episode can be found on episode 31 on my website. We're done with policies, but the next episode is about Azure Blueprints. So extending your Azure governance even further. If you like my work, support the channel by subscribing, liking, and commenting. If you want to go to the next episode, simply hit icon on the side or follow the playlist. And as always, see you there.